Hey guys, today we're going to go over skeletal muscle action potentials. Just kind of go over the brief details on that. Also go over the thick and thin filaments within skeletal muscle. And I'm going to real quickly start with that. Within skeletal muscle, there are some uh, filaments referred to as myofilaments. These are basically the smallest structures within a muscle fiber. Uh, keep in mind a muscle fiber is a type of cell. Okay, it has many of the parts of a cell. Um, of course, the muscle cell is a very specialized cell. Um, so some of the organelles look a little different and they have a slightly different function, some of them. Um, but they are, it is a true cell. So really within the muscle uh, fiber, we have these very, very small uh, myofilaments. And two, the, the two main myofilaments, of course, many of you know this already, I'm sure, is actin and myosin. Actin is referred to as the thin filament because under a microscope it looks thin. Myosin is the thick filament because just the opposite, under a microscope it looks thick. And these two are referred to as contractile proteins, okay? Which means they are directly involved in the contraction process. Keep in mind that when contraction of skeletal muscle occurs, the entire muscle as a whole, right, shortens, okay, from, you know, origin to insertion, right, from, from attachment point to attachment point, the entire muscle does shorten as it contracts, okay, but this is the key thing, the actual myofilaments do not change length, what do they do? They simply slide closer together when the muscle contracts, when the muscle relaxes, they slide further apart. The actual sliding process of these two filaments which triggers a contraction, okay, sliding closer together, triggers a contraction sliding further apart, would be, uh, again, relaxation. So keep that in mind. We do have a more detailed video on the steps involved in skeletal muscle contraction, so look for that one if you want more uh, details. But I wanted to talk more about, um, you know, action potential here in a minute. Before I do that, though, I want you to realize, too, that myosin it really doesn't have anything special on it. It just has these, these heads, um, which, which will grip the actin whenever they start to slide closer together. The actin molecule, on the other hand, has two other molecules on it, tropo, tropomyosin and troponin. So these are considered on the actin molecule. Uh, many books would refer to them as you know part of the thin filament or thin filaments themselves. Um, but they are not contractile proteins. What are they? They are regulatory proteins. They regulate contraction. And the way it works is calcium, when, you're, when your muscle gets ready to fire and contract, calcium floats in and binds to troponin. And once it binds to troponin, that triggers the moving of tropomyosin. It literally moves out of the way. It, it, it shifts uh, what, what the book what books call off the active sites of actin. So it shifts out of the way. That shifting of tropomyosin out of the way essentially lets myosin grab the actin and slide. So this would be essentially the step that has to occur before contraction takes place. It's the step immediately before contraction. Okay, and, and notice really the, 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 the mineral that triggers it all is calcium. And because these two basically allow either contraction to occur or not, these are regulatory proteins. So keep that in mind, okay? Now what's it gonna look like if we graph it? What, do we, what does it look like on a, a chart uh, of an action potential? Well, two things you wanna remember real fast, and I'll draw it out real fast here. A muscle cell, so we'll just put muscle cell, when it is resting, okay, it's at rest, will have sodium outside the cell and potassium inside the cell. And these are maintained by the sodium potassium pump, their locations. The pump's always keeping sodium out and maintaining that, and the pump is keeping potassium in. Um, so keep that in mind. And everything's kind of happy, and that will give us a negative 90 millivolt voltage. Okay? What do we call this? We call this RMP, resting membrane potential. What is that essentially maintained by? It's maintained by the pump. 
the sodium potassium pump. As long as sodium sits out here and potassium sits in here, maintained by the pump, we've got a rest. We've got a resting membrane potential of negative 90 millivolts. And all is happy. Now the muscle's relaxed and at rest. Well, what's gonna happen when the muscle fires, like I said, on the cellular level, calcium's binding to troponin and causing the shift of tropomyosin, so that's all helping at the cellular level. What's happening over here as far as sodium and potassium are concerned? Well, what's gonna happen is that's gonna trigger the opening of sodium gates, okay? Um, it's a, we call that a depolarization of the muscle cell. The muscle cell is going to be stimulated or depolarized and that's going to rep be represented by this upswing. This upswing represents the depolarization. Again, when that depolarization occurs, sodium will actually flood in the cell. It floods in because the gates open, the sodium channels open, and sodium naturally wants to be inside. The pump has to force it out. Sodium floods in. So really this depolarization is triggered by sodium ions, okay? And when it depolarizes, that is gonna trigger, like I said, the firing of the muscle cell, and that's gonna change the voltage. Because like I said, when sodium's outside and potassium's in, we have a negative 90 millivolt voltage. Well, when sodium changes its position and goes in, our voltage changes. Our voltage spikes up to plus 75 millivolts. And that's what we see right here. That is the peak voltage during firing of skeletal muscle. Now, right after the muscle fires, what's it gonna wanna do? It's gonna wanna go back down to rest. So that is when potassium gates open, okay? Potassium will flood out because that actually wants to flood out. Um, the pump keeps it in. <clears throat> so we get what we call a repolarization, which is a downward swing triggered by potassium, okay? Which, as you'll see, helps bring it back down to rest. Now, you say, well, what about the pump? The pump is actually working the whole time. The pump never stops. The pump uh, is still trying to get sodium out and potassium in, it will be unsuccessful when the gates are open. Once the gates close, and what actually happens is the sodium gate closes first, then the potassium gate opens, then the potassium gate then closes as well, right? After uh, this downward swing. Once the gates are closed, then the pump fixes everything fairly quickly. It starts getting sodium back out, and potassium back in. And where are we back? We're back to rest again. So the pump never stops, just keep that in mind. It's just unsuccessful in pumping sodium out potassium in while the gates are open. The gates close, the pump does kind of kind of catches back up again, does what it's supposed to do. So that's a quick graph of an action potential, okay? And this is for, again, skeletal muscle. So hope that helps. Uh, Till next time, good luck and good studying.